Should the president be self-isolating or under self-quarantine? You know, questions like that I leave up to the physician in charge of the president's health. And we have a very competent White House physician here who is responsible not only for the president but for the senior staff in the White House. So I would leave that, that question up to them. The original development of the test by the CDC, which was a good test, is a test that was geared more for a public health situation where they send it to the state and local public health authorities. And then when someone comes into the doctor's office to get a test, they talk about whether they really need it and the person orders that. Traditionally for infectious diseases, that kind of approach works. What is clear now that it doesn't work when you need to essentially blanket the country with that. The only way that works is if you get the private sector involved, some of the standard companies that make the diagnostic tests that you and I get when we go for a regular visit to a physician. They have been engaged right now. The FDA, the CDC, uh, all of the government agencies, the secretary himself, Secretary Azar has been very much involved in working with that group to be able to get that revved up really quickly. You know, I, I hate to give dates on things, but what I'm hearing from the task force meeting that I just left, that that should very likely happen within the next week or so. It's not going to be months, it's going to be a week or so, where you're going to get many, many more uh, tests that are going to be available. We have to start uh, implementing both containment and mitigation. And what was done when you do closing the school is mitigation. We've got to try as best as we can to distance ourselves from each other, particularly if you are within a group that are at higher risk. If you do get infected, you're going to have a complication. And those are the elderly, people with underlying conditions, chronic congestive heart failure, heart disease, lung disease, kidney disease, diabetes, particularly among those if you're an elderly with that. So those are the kind of things we need to do now. And the point that I was trying to make is that we don't want to wait until you get a lot of infections because sometimes when you, you make it, uh, and whether it be Maryland, whatever they did, you make a decision to do something and someone might say, well, are you overreacting? We got we to gotta lose that. <laughs> we got to start looking at doing things now in anticipation of what might happen. I believe if we did not do that with China early on, when there's already well, a lot of communities all right. Well, I think that was a prudent choice. We spent a lot of time thinking about it, discussing it, about whether we should do it, and it was the right public health call. I am not going to comment on a, a, an individual who has a very competent...